Good morning, everyone. Um, I was so inspired by what Charlie showed us with the foot of the month of last month, which was foot 22 and 25, that I thought let's make a nice little project and I can show you again what the foot looks like and how it works. And uh, what I decided to make was a plant holder. So um, I'm going to show you what I've done so far and how I go along. And then I would love it if you guys made your own and sent us some photos. Um, I mean, the, the creativity and the, um, the ideas that you guys have always amaze us. So I think Jolly would love to see that, and so would I. So let's see how we get along. So what I've got here is a piece of felt. And I've drawn some chalk lines on it, diagonal chalk lines, two centimeters apart, um, that I want to use as my stitching guide for my decoration. And I'm going to use this Venice color cotton wool that I got from Charlie um, that I'm going to do as my decoration. So I'm just going to start off with measuring three strands of this, this for me. Um, I'm a very lazy sewer, so I'm going to... Uh, now, I'm sure there's more correct ways to do it than I'm doing. Um, so you must forgive me for always trying to find a shortcut. But here we go. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to be sewing. I'm not going to cut it off every time. So I'm just going to be sewing like that. And I've just started to measure out my first strand. And then I'll use that length as the indication, as my measurement for the other two strands. So then I know that I've, because I'm going to do a three strand one. Uh, remember foot number 22 can take three strands and foot number 25 can take five strands. So typically foot number 25 would be better for your, uh, like your uh, thinner cottons. Um, for instance, uh, crochet cottons would work perfectly for that. Then foot number 22 takes three strands, so obviously any, any width, but you can only add three. Um, and then uh, that is easier to use thicker wool. Um, so this cotton is very, uh, it's not that thick. You can use a thicker wool than this, um, but I'm going to try it because I want red, and this is a nice one. So um, I'm going to be using this as my guide. So I'm going to use foot number 22, just to show you, foot number 22, and that is the three strand, I hope you can see there, that's the three strand one, and I'm going to show you now how I put it in. We have sent you uh, the Benina video before that shows you how to use it, um, but we thought that we'll do our own little video as well. Right, so I've got number one. I'm just working here on my lap and at the sewing machine so you can see easily what I'm doing. Okay. I think the ideas of what you can do, because obviously on clothing you can have very, very nice decorations with clothing. Um, um, but I think, uh, you know, the... I love to buy some pot plants, um, you know, the typical woolies flowers, the roses and whatever, just to, especially in winter, just to brighten up the house a bit. And I think these, a plant holder would be a perfect, and also I think it's going to make a great gift. So if this works out nicely and I like it, I'm definitely going to make a few more. And then if I buy a plant like that as a gift to someone, then I will definitely, uh, you know, give it to them in a handmade or a self-made plant holder. Um, which I would love to find a gift like that myself. Or to receive one. So if you guys want to make one and send it to me, I'll say yes, thanks. <laughs> All right, so the first tip that Charlie gave me is that you take your three strands. Here we go. Just to show you, I've got three strands. Just make a little knot to keep them together. There we go. That's going to make it easier. Now the rest of it, I'm going to keep here on my side. Of course, you can use three, three balls and just take a loose end on each side. Right, let's see. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and this, I suggest that you guys look at the Benina video because they're obviously um, much more professional than me 
and it's easier to see what they're doing. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do, and this, I suggest that you guys look at the Benina video because they're obviously um, much more professional than me and it's easier to see what they're doing. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, so, but I'm going to try my best to show you. Okay, sorry. I'm just going to slide the three into the um, opening that it's got. There we go. Nice and easy. So let me show you what I did. I'm going to use my, this is of course, the one of my favorite best tool, sewing tools ever. I got this from Charlie, the fifth thumb or something like that, that it's called. But this is awesome to just use here at the machine. Um, I'll show you as I do that as, as well, you know, because I have actually sewn onto my uh, thumb. So since I've had this, I haven't had that problem yet. So what I've done is I've slided the three strands in here. I'm holding the knotted end this side and you'll see that the three strands are falling into the three grooves that the foot has. So I'm putting it flat into that groove. I'm just pulling it back so that it's nice and stiff. I've got the, you'll see that the, 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 the what's very nice about this foot is it's cut out here at the back. So it means that the wool is lying flat on the fabric. So I'm holding it like that in that um, cut and then I've got my three and it's got a little so I don't know if you I need to look here so I can't see if you guys can see but it's got this little handle and then I just close it so just to show you again I've got my three strands and with my knot pulled here at the end I had the three strands in the grooves one, two, three, and I just close the little handle there, and you can see it's locked in. So that's going to make it much easier to sew. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit out of out of assistance at the moment, so I'm going to have to do all the video work myself while sewing. So I hope this will work out for you guys to see nicely. Um, right. So I've got it fitted. This is foot number 22. So I'm going on my machine. Oh, going on my machine. Foot 22. There we go. I've chosen foot 22. Perfect. It shows me the correct foot. There we go. Now, I want to choose a stitch. I think I'm going to go for a decorative stitch. I saw on the paperwork that Charlie gave out at the club day, um, when the figures look a bit better, I do suggest that you try to um, go to the club day um, because you always get this, uh, you know, except for the demonstration, which only extensively shows you what to do. She also gives you paperwork, so you can do this at home. Um, but I know at this stage, some of us, uh, or most of us are isolating and staying at home to be safe, which is great. Please carry on to do that. We want you all to be safe. But you'll see here, there's a lot. And that's why we're also posting it on Facebook and on the WhatsApp group. Um, so there is uh, some samples. And um, just to show you here, these are ones that, that uh, Charlie did with according feet. Uh, and there she wrote, you, you have received this on, on your WhatsApp before, she wrote the numbers of number stitch that she used. So I think I would also like to use a decorative stitch. I'm going to look for number 308. So let's see, because I, that looks quite nice to me. And I've decided, so I'm choosing 308. So I've decided to use a grey cotton. It's a grey, it's grey fabric. And I think on this red, I would want this decorative stitch to stand out. So I'm just going to, this is just plain cotton. Um, I'm actually thinking it would have probably been nicer if I used like embroidery cotton. But not to worry. Then I'm going to put my foot on the left hand side of my line. So this is all going to, this is going to not, my line is not where my decorative stitch is going to be. It's going to just be. On the right of it. Okay, let's see how it goes. I'm gonna go a little bit back here. 
but this is going to make it easier for me to stitch straight and of course you don't have to sit straight you can do curls and swirls and whatever which looks very nice but i wanted something straight so let's see um i'll probably have to get the chalk out um just clean it off because you're going to see it now um, but not to worry let's see this is going to be my test one and um Oh wow, look at that! So I didn't test this before I made the video. I'm like starting at zero like you would at home, not knowing what you're doing. And I thought because we've got such a good instructional video already that's done by Benina and for those who did the, um, who did the class, went to the, the, um, who went to the club day, you guys, um, have seen this before so uh, let's I'm, I'm i'm seeing it as doing doing it from scratch as you would at home all right so now i'm just pulling it a little bit because i want to turn it so obviously now i need to just focus i suppose i can cut it off um i'm sure you're all sitting at home thinking of better ways for me to do this um which is great uh, you can definitely, uh, you know, I always encourage anyone to make a video themselves. I know you're all scared to do it, but don't. Look at me. I'm also scared to do it. And I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm just following the instructions. And the great thing of about this is the foot does all the work. The foot does all the work, and you can now, of course, see that for yourself. So I didn't, I didn't practice this. I didn't do it beforehand. I just want to pull out these along cotton here so I just want to pull that out so you can see nicely I'll just cut it off later I'm um, sorry the light is maybe of such such a way that you can't see properly but I'll try to show you as best I can so I'm not pulling pulling on on this rope um, on the on the cotton um, or the wool I'm just holding it flat so I can see that it goes straight and the machine is really doing the rest the only thing I'm doing is just keeping it flat and trying my best to see that I um, stay as close and as straight next to my guiding chalk line as possible. Oh, I am loving this. So of course, because I'm coming back, I'm now not on the left-hand side of my, my chalk line, I'm on the right-hand side. So I'm just going to finish it off. I'm going to finish it off by doing a knot because I'm just going to cut it all off. So I don't want to just uh, let it pull out. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's looking so nice. Sorry, my mask is in between here. Yeah? Right, let's see. It is looking so nice. I'm going to take it out in a while. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just uh, not let you sit through the whole thing. So I'm going to do three, stitch three, three rows and then um, I'll stop the video and then I'll just, um, I'll just do the rest. So you don't have to sit through everything. What I do want to do is I'm going to try and move this in a bit for you. And just see if you can see better how I'm sewing. Because what I want you to see, what's very, very nice about what's happening here, is, um, sorry, I can't zoom. I can't zoom because I'm, I've got my phone the other way around. Because I want you to see what it does. How nice and flat and separated this foot keeps the three strands here. It's really, it can't tangle up. It's keeping it nice and flat. It's keeping it straight. Um, I mean, I am now holding it flat on my, with my end, but you basically don't have to do that because the foot is really doing that for you. You cannot, I can't see you doing this without the foot because this, this um, wool is very alive. You know what I mean? It's got movement in itself. Um, so as I stitch, this, 
wool is sort of moving around a little bit and what I like about this foot is it's keeping it flat and down which I can't do I can't keep my finger there so without this foot I think you would not be able to do this technique this is really a must have um, oh, and I can just think on a shirt what nice decorations you can do um, on any clothing and cushion covers and um, Actually, even a, a cover for your overlocker, your sewing machine. Um, whoops, sorry, just cutting that off. And I'm going to turn it around, just pull it a little bit. Uh, wow, wow, wow. So you see that the long strand uh, where the, the ball would have been if you didn't if I didn't cut it off the ball would be on my side it would be facing me here you can see the knot that I made in the beginning oh my goodness I'm sure I s I'm talking so much that I stitch on the wrong way on the wrong side didn't I oh now I'm just pulling it out here sorry I'm just gonna pull it back um it seems to be very forgiving <laughs> Yeah, I've made a mess now, but I think it's very forgiving in the sense that I can just pull it back. Let me just, uh, I don't want to pull them all out, so let me just turn it around so that I'm back in the right area. And of course, if I did not use this foot, I don't know what I would have used because, as I say, I don't think another foot can do that. Um, there we go. It's all back and no problem. Um, right, I can just pull it out a little bit so that I have some space to work with it and now I'm going to be stitching the next one and the next one. But before I put this in, let me just try and show you and I'll do some nice photos as well. But here you can see three of them that I've done. I think I'm talking so much that I'm putting the foot on the wrong side. Um, but of my chalk line, but it doesn't matter because Nobody knows the way I intended it to be. If some of them are closer than some of other part, it's just going to look like part of the design. So I'm going to be uh, showing you as well how I make this um, this plant holder, how I sew it together. Um, but I mean, I I'm sure most of you can figure out that out for yourselves. Um, I'm just basically going to put a round base in. I'm going to sew the side together and put a round base in. So I'll show you that as well. But you can see here, yeah, in spite of this, because remember this cotton is not like wool, it's not woven, it's just a lot of strands that's loosely together. So that just shows to me how perfect this foot is. Because as I was saying, it's very, it's very alive. It's very alive. Because it's, you can see there, it's just, it's making little strands, you know, it's just unraveling big time. Um, so I'm very impressed with this foot to be able to keep it this flat and stitch over it because I think normal um, knitting wool would be easier to work with because it's 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 not as live and frilling out. Um, but I'm uh, I like it. I'm impressed. I like the stitch, the grey stitch as you can see over it. I don't even mind that I didn't use the um, em embroidery cotton because this cotton looks perfect it shows the gray it shows the stitch um, it does sink in a little bit because it's got a little star there and because this this of the way the this um, cotton wool is it is sinking in a little bit so you don't see that detail as much which I think if I used wool wool then it would have shown even better um, because I saw Charlie's one was with normal knitting wool um, double knitting one and it's and you also used a contrast color and it showed very very nicely if you have a look here I used number um, 308 which is which is this one and you can see that it shows it very nicely um, so I think it does depend on what you use uh, but I'm very happy with it so far so I'm gonna finish this up then I'll show you when I'm finished I hope this shows to you um, how to how to use the foot um, as I say look at the Benina one that I've sent you before um, it because it's it's a uh, much better camera work and it's closer there's no talking but uh, it's got instructions to show you what to do uh, maybe you would 
want me to just sew one more just sew one more let's just do one more and then I'll stop the video and I'll just continue on when I uh, to show you what I do after I've done this um, right there we go can you ladies see um, I would encourage you to try all the different um, try all the different stitches I just want to Pull it a little bit because I just want to test. Oh, I'm making a mess. It's luckily the foot is keeping it in order, but I want to just see if I hold this a little bit tighter, not a lot, just a little bit tighter, if I'm gonna have a nicer finish. Um, no, not really, because this foot is already doing the tightness or the tension. Excuse my English. Working at home, you know, don't use your second language as much because uh, I don't see my colleagues as much. We don't talk as much. I'm basically just talking to myself, my dogs, and my husband. Um, so I've got very intelligent uh, conversations here. So we recently got a puppy, I must tell you that's been uh, fun, but a challenge. Um, he's a real character. And I'm also going something very fast here. Oh, probably it's better to do it slower. But who wants to go slower, right? Charlie would tell you not 100 kilometers an hour. So, Charlie, I know you're right. You're right, not 100 kilometers an hour. Just going to pull this to the back to see what it looks like. Oh, it looks nice. It looks nice. You are getting the idea there. So, I'm obviously just going to clip it off here and clip it off here um, after I've sewn it just to make it neat. But, um, now this is working out great stuff. We can easily pull it like that back and forth. The foot really controls it for you. So I'm going to go back and I am going to do this side now. But I'm sure you are ready for me to stop showing you how I sew it. And to show you um, what I do after that. Okay, so I finished uh, sewing my decorative stitches and I'm back on the normal sewing foot. I've got a 34D in there and I've got my needle position um, on a 5 to the right so that I can have a very shallow seam. Because I think I might have made my circle a little bit small for what I want to use it for. Um, sorry. So um, I'm just going to be sewing all around and uh, my side seam because uh, this was a rectangle that I cut so my side seam I didn't sew that closed uh, on a straight angle I took that out so that we have a so I have a little bit of a cone shaped um, bottle when I'm finished so we'll see when I'm done here yeah if uh, that worked out the way I thought and then of course I just need to still do uh, the seam at the top um, you'll see, you've seen, can see here that I've just cut open all the um, red cottons which I haven't done on the other side but I'll show that to you now um, okay so here is my sewn um, pot holder so just to show you there's my bottom um, and here's my side seam and I haven't cut open the um, red cotton wool here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just overlock the base. Which I don't have to do because it's not a fraying um, fabric. The melt is very sturdy. But, you know, especially if I would give this to someone, I would want it to be neater. Um, for myself, I might have just left it like that. But since I'm doing this for the video, I'll do the right thing. And I will overlock it. And I'll overlock the top so that I can do a nice seam. I didn't overlock. Um, next time I would overlock the side seam first. So that 
uh, because now I've stitched it here to the side and it's not going to look neat, but I can do that. Um, yeah, so this is my test one and I'm going to show you the finished product soon and hopefully you like it. Okay, so I'm just, I've already overlocked the base and the side and I'm just overlocking the top. So that my sides are nice and uh, neat and uh, I'll do the scene quickly and then I'll show you. And there we go. Ta-da! I don't think it's too bad. There's obviously <laughs> room for improvement, but I think for a first try, just to show you how beautiful this came out. I am so impressed with this foot number 22. Um, yeah, and I think I would definitely want to try some more. Um, I'm going to go and put a pot in there and let's have a look um, what the finished product looks like on display. So, my pot plant holder is finished. There we go. There you can see it nicely. I think the stitching... The stitching came out very nice on the wool um, as a decoration and um, all I need to do is just rub off, my, rub off my chalk with a wet cloth, which I haven't done yet, but I'm quite impressed by it. I think it looks very nice. Um, that foot number 22, I couldn't believe how easy it works. Um, as I said before, I didn't test it before, I didn't try it, I just put it on and made the video and it just worked perfectly. I'm very impressed with it and I also confirmed with Charlie uh, foot number 22 and number 25C is still on a minus 10% promotion till end of June 2021. So if you want to get um, that foot, now would be a great time to make use of that promotion. Um, it really works. It really works well, I must say. And I think the uses for that cording foot is endless, and it makes it so easy. I don't think I'll try anything similar without that foot. So it's very nice, and I've got a challenge for you guys. Since you all, I hope, staying at home at the moment and trying to keep safe, um, I think what about a little sew along? We. Everybody that wants to join in and make a pot plant holder. You don't obviously have to do cording. You can decorate it however you like and whatever you want to do. Um, I've used, used some melt uh, fabric and, um, as I said, cotton wool and the co uh, cording foot number 22. But you can do uh, maybe quilting fabric, a reversible bag whatever you want and we'd love to see each other's photos and see what the others are doing and get some ideas there and um, yeah please please share along let's let's do that in the next two weeks and send each other some photos and I'm definitely going to make another one when I make my next one I will make it a bit higher uh, for this pot it's perfect but you, for a little bit of bigger pot plant I think I would prefer it to be a little bit higher so if I have a, a higher pot plant, um, it will, f you know, cover that, that top little part of the pot. But also if I use it with a smaller one, I can just fold the ends to the inside. So it will fit, fit there as well. Maybe I'll make a little bit bigger at the top. This one fits perfectly. It's, um, it's a little, not, you know, there's some, still some ease. So I don't think there'll be a problem to put it in, in a, in a little bit of a bigger pot. But I think I will do that so that I have space to fold it in. But, I mean, I'll see. Because the, these pots are pretty standard. And if I make, you know, one or two sizes, I'll keep on using them. Um, so what I've done, just to show you when I put this in here, um, some of the pots have a little self-container, watering container. This one didn't have one. So I just took a little Ziploc, Ziploc bag and put it over there so that my fabric... Um, baggy doesn't um, get wet and of course my table gets wet so you'll see I did do all my overlocking and my seams um, unfortunately what I didn't do is I did, couldn't match up the uh, on the side but you know it's not really something that um, would bother me that much uh, but I think in future I'll take that into account I didn't do my sewing I must say um, very very precise um, which I would do next time um, I just wanted to you know test it and see see what it how it comes out and show you guys but I mean you know you're not gonna look at it like this so for me it's, it's fine it's perfect like this 
Um, but yes, I think I'll sl sew a little bit slower next time so I can uh, make sure that I'm straight on my sewing chalk lines. But I must say uh, that foot is mesmerizing when it does that stitches and I start looking at the foot and the stitching and not where I'm sewing. So I did go a little bit skew, but I got totally mesmerized. Um, by the machine um, yeah so and I mean you can use any fabric for this and you you know it's such a nice gift it's such a nice thing to have in your house and a nice decoration and I mean yeah I've got this now it's going to be standing here on my kitchen table and um, I think it's a it's a it's a nice addition and of course can make a lot with different colors to either suit my plants or to suit my decor um, and I'll keep a few for full gifts as well so, um, yeah, enjoy. I look forward to seeing your pictures. Join along, please. It'll be great. Keep ourselves inside the house and busy for the next two weeks. Um, if you visit Charlie, uh, I was there yesterday quickly, and uh, they are adhering to all the COVID rules with sanitizer, not letting, allowing too many people in the shop. So if you want to go for a lesson or um, go and visit her, make an appointment or just go early, I think that's always the safest before it's too busy. But please go and visit her. Keep your mask on. They've got their masks on and they'll be very happy to see you. And of course, you know, she's got whatever you need from machines to advice um, and uh, enjoy your sewing. I'm looking forward to seeing those basket pictures. Please send them. See you soon. Bye.